Hey guys and welcome to today's video which is all about how to spot fake lady Dior handbags. Now they are very difficult to spot and they're very high priced items so if you're thinking about buying one but not sure if it might be real or fake hopefully today I'll have a few tips for you. I have two lady Dior bags to show you today. This is the medium size lady Dior in the pearlescent grey with the champagne hardware and this is my mini lady Dior in the pearlescent lotus lambskin which is absolutely beautiful again with champagne hardware. That description varies from when I unboxed it. I did correct it originally in the box down below but now I'm talking sense. So these are my two bags. The reason that I want to show you both of these bags today is because there are quite a few differences between these two bags which are both genuine. So I can at least show you some of the variations between the genuine bags and I'll also point out the features of the bag that are usually really poorly replicated on fakes. It is also worth bearing in mind that the Lady Dior has been around since 1994 so there have been multiple different incarnations of the bag and different styles, colours, shapes, different materials and so it's very difficult to tell purely based on style and colour alone whether or not the bag is real or not. Because even at the moment we have the classic Lady Dior's like I've shown you, this little mini is actually a new variation again with the flap in the top. There's also the supple Lady Dior's that have a completely different soft structure. There's the My Lady Dior that have the strap with the badges on and again have the flap in the top and they have their own sizing. And there's also the cruise line, that's just at the moment. So if you think there's been over 20 years of this bag, it's very difficult to judge on that alone. So let's start off by just looking at the bags themselves and then at the end I'll talk about packaging and other things that come with the bags. So let's start off by looking at the handles of the bag. These are one of the most poorly replicated aspects of the Lady Dior on replicas. So if you read around on a lot of websites about the Lady Dior, many websites state about how good the handles are at standing up and how they don't flop over very easily. But as you can see, even with slight movement, mine go down. But what you notice is they flop straight forward and back. They don't wiggle from side to side. If I pick the bags up and shake them slightly, you can see that the handles don't wiggle. That's because of the way that the handles are attached onto the bag. So if we just have a look at the handles in a little bit more detail, as you can see, the actual handle itself is attached onto the bag by this O-shaped loop and that fits within here. Now if I try and wiggle the handles around you can see they don't move because this isn't free within the hole, it's actually fixed in. The handle is on a bit of a pivot and can move from side to side. Even the charm here is not free moving, it's on again a pivot. From side to side. Often in poorly made fake bags they haven't put this detail in and these little loops will move freely within the holes and therefore the handles will flop all over. If we look at the same feature on the mini you can see there that the handles are again on a pivot, probably easier to see from this side. So this feature is obviously best assessed by seeing the bag in person, however if you're buying online obviously it's very difficult to tell. However one feature that you can look for online is how the charms are attached onto the bag. So as I already mentioned this bit is on a pivot. So if you look at the D, I, O and R they're all hanging down here, the O sits on a little bit of lambskin of its own, but if you look at the side you can see that they're actually attached on by little figures of eight, not simple loops, they're figures of eight for each individual charm. So the reason for these figures of eight is that they actually stop the charm wiggling around and they allow it to lie flat. It does still move a little bit but it doesn't move all over the place. On poorly made fakes you often see little loops, just simple O's there and then the charm moves around an awful lot more and doesn't sit quite as beautifully. The other feature on the charm worth bearing in mind is on the back of this little piece of leather behind the O. So you can see it just says Christian Dior there on the back of the plate. It doesn't say Christian Dior Paris, it doesn't say Christian Dior made in wherever, it just says Christian Dior. As I previously mentioned in my other videos, this bag was made from 1994 and Christian Dior stopped making handbags in France in 1990. If it says Christian Dior made in Paris or made in France on your bag, I would be checking its authenticity. Usually the Lady Dior is made in Italy and there are a couple that are made in Spain. Next up on the outside of the bag, if we flop the handles down and just have a look on the inside of the top here, you can see that on these little silver plates there are little screw heads on either side of the plates. Now these aren't actual real screws, they are actually just engraved into the metal. Supposedly the original Lady Dior's did actually have genuine screws here but the recent bags definitely do not and I'm not sure what year exactly they stopped putting the screw heads in, I couldn't find that on my research but all the bags now are made with artificial screws there, they're just engraved into the metal. While we're looking at the top of the bag, next up is the zip. So if you have a look at the centre of the zip here, you can see that you have the little CD charm dangling down on a one, two, three 
link chain. There are three links to the chain and then you have the little charm. It's not directly attached onto the zip. I've seen that on quite a few fakes. So you have this little chain and then you have quite a weighty little charm there. The opening to the mini is a little bit different. It is one of these flap bags, the newer style. So if you look in the top there, you can see your hardware on the inside is exactly the same, but then you just have this flap. So it's pretty much like a tongue. It folds back up and then you can see it directly into the bag. There are no real features to note on here apart from just, just the line of stitching around the edge and it's lovely and thick and it's double thickness here if you can see, you can see there's two layers actually. Speaking of the double layer, around the edge of the bag should also have two layers to it. If you have a look a little bit closer here, you can see that there are actually two layers to the leather that are stitched together and that's what helps to give it the lovely structure and form. That again is exactly the same on my medium. If you look here, you can see there are those two layers. So what you sometimes see on the fake is that instead of having these two layers, they've actually just got one piece of leather that then goes up and then folds over and goes inside. Now that isn't on all of the fakes, but it's on some of the particularly poor ones. And that is why they don't have this beautiful rigid shape. When you look at fake bags, they often don't have this beautiful crisp shape, particularly the shape on the side. They're often bulging or they don't look quite so kind of A-line as you can see here. And I would be very highly skeptical of these bags because yes, some of them have been used for many years, but they're an expensive bag because they're beautifully handmade, which means they have good, strong structure to them as well. So my friends who have this bag, who've had it for five, six, seven years, they all look like this. <laughs> Don't be fooled. The patent ones as well, they seem to hold their shape incredibly well. They don't look squished and squashed. And those people who are selling them saying, well, it's an older bag. It's an older luxury bag. It should still look very good. I would be very skeptical of bags that are very warped. They shouldn't do that because that is what you're paying for among other things. Even on the mini, the A-line on the side maybe isn't quite as dramatic, but it's still got a very crisp form. The other thing that you'll notice here is that you can see this edge beautifully clearly. There's a beautiful crisp edge there. It's got great structure. This bag is going to hold its shape. So don't trust those fakes that you see that just, they say they're battered. Well, why would you want it? Because it won't look genuine. Now, just finally, while we're looking at the outside of the bag, we should really talk about the material that the bag is made out of. So these are both made out of lambskin, but you can get Lady Dior's, as I've said, made out of all kinds of different leathers and materials. The softness of the lambskin is absolutely beautiful. Many super fakes or very good fakes use very nice quality lambskin, and it's very difficult often to tell based on the lambskin alone, whether or not the bag is real or fake. When it comes to fake spotting, I wouldn't necessarily use the leather as a guide. What I would be looking at instead is the stitching on the bag. More often than not with the Lady Dior, the stitching is designed to be the exact same colour as the leather of the bag. Not always, but usually. There are occasionally ones that I've seen with slight contrast stitching, but usually they're the same colour. And as you can tell on both of these, the stitching matches the bags perfectly. So I've talked about the history of the bag and where the pattern, this canish pattern on the front of the bag comes from many times before in other videos. And I'll pop links down to those below if you're interested in watching those. But today I'm mainly just focusing on how to fake spot. And when it comes to the pattern on the bag, it generally is quite well replicated. It's the stitching of the pattern that is poorly done. If you look at the patterning on the bag, you can notice that there are three cushions across on the mini size. There are five as you go across on the medium and there are actually seven as you go across on the large size bag. So these are the traditional sizes as I've mentioned some of the newer styles actually have in between sizes as well so for the classic Lady Dior that is what you should be looking out for. But as I said the leather and the pattern is often very well recreated on fake bags but it's not done with the same finesse. The stitching is often slightly off in colour and sometimes it's uneven or not quite right or they don't quite get those hard solid edges. Not particularly this way looking at the bag but when you look at the top you often see that this shape is not quite there. So looking at the feet of the bag, if you look on here you can see that the feet aren't a dome but they're not a cone. There's some shape in between and that is the shape that you tend to find on the medium and the large Lady Dior. On the large bags, you may also have an extra foot just in the middle here. Looking at the small, or mini, I should say, bag, there is actually a slightly different foot shape. It's almost as though that dome comb shape has had the top chopped off, so it's a little bit flatter on the end, so the feet on this are a little bit different. On the medium and large bags, I have seen fakes with really badly shaped feet that do completely give them away, so it is something to look out for. I know some of you must be thinking, if the details are this small, why would you buy the genuine bag? If you need to ask, it's probably not worth it, quite frankly. For me, I love them. I absolutely adore all these finer details, that's why I make these videos. But if you don't get all excited about simple things, this is probably not a bag worth laying this amount of money out for. I think it's very easy for me to sit here with my real bag 
bags and go, oh, if I saw a fake, it would be so easy to spot. It definitely wouldn't. Um, but it'd be a lot easier for me if I could take a real bag with me and just put it next to a fake and look at the differences. And I would totally recommend if you know anyone who has a bag that they possibly could lend you, they might not, but if they have a bag that they could lend you, to take it when you're looking at these bags to see if they look similar. I would also say on my bag that my D, I and R have beautifully scratched the O on here. So if you're looking at a pre-loved bag and it seems a little bit scratched, that does happen, don't worry. So next up, let's have a look at the inside of the bag. Now, one of the biggest questions actually on the internet asking about whether or not bags are real or fake is based on the color of the lining. That's because the unofficial rule with the Lady Dior is that the outside color of the bag should really match the inside. Now, this is definitely not the case in all bags, in particular the black, the black and the black patent uh, Lady Dior's inside, they're often red, but they can be black as well. I've seen a lot of questions about people who've got the black bag with the red lining and then gone, is it fake or is it real? that's not something that you can go off. So if I show you the inside of my mini, if I open that up, just curl the flap up inside. So this doesn't actually match the outside colour, obviously. If you can see in there, there's only two real features to note. There is the canage pattern inside on the fabric, and then you have a zip with a leather zip pull, and you have the little tab. Now if I just bend the bag slightly and briefly, Inside there you can see there is a little tab that says Christian Dior Paris, made in Italy. And then above that is a completely separate zip, so that little tab isn't attached in any way to the zip at all. And if I just open that up, you have your pocket inside. And if I pull that pocket out, so that is actually my date code just there inside the pocket. If we compare that to the much harder to access inside lining of my grey Lady Dior, we just undo the zip. You can see here that the mouth is quite tight. Yes, that is real if you get it on a fake bag. Yes, people do spend all that money for a bag that is this difficult to get into. If you have a look just inside there, you can see that this is slightly different. You have your zip with a leather zip pull, and then you have actually attached onto the leather surrounding yours. It says Christian Dior Paris made in Italy. It doesn't say anything like boutique or made in France. And if I just flip that up, on the underside there, you can actually see my little date code as well. So inside there, again, you can see the canage motif. Now, one thing I would say when I've been looking at a lot of fakes is that many fakes don't have the canage pattern inside. They tend to have the monogram oblique pattern with Dior written all over. Now, there are genuine bags with that because the lining has changed over time and certain bags and different styles have different linings. But there's a lot more fakes out there with Dior written on the lining, it would seem, than there are with the canage pattern on the inside. So again, something to look out for. So if you just have a look in there, you can see that I've got the canage pattern and it's got little CDs every so often and then you have your zip and your tag here. One other thing I would say about both the tags, both in my medium and in the small, is regardless of how they are stitched into the bag, they are stitched right the way around the tab, even if that edge isn't attached to the bag. So as you can see there, it's got stitching right the way around the tag. So whilst I mentioned that the colour of the lining might not exactly match the colour of the outside of the bag, any leather used inside the bag does match the outside. So it's actually the pearlescent leather used on the little tabs inside and on the zipper pulls on both of these bags, which is a beautiful little feature and again, not always replicated in fakes. Now, just before we completely finish on the bags, I just want to show you the straps that come with them because both of these do come with a long shoulder slash crossbody strap. So on my medium Lady Dior, you have a long leather strap and then on either side of the buckle, you can see that there is actually a little CD there. That's on both sides. It is adjustable and again you have your clasps on either end. My Mini Lady Dior came with the chain, so this is a newer style. So it comes with a matching rose gold chain. You can see here on the shoulder strap that you actually have the little fake screws again on either end and again your chain is just attached onto the leather so it doesn't move backwards and forwards. And again, you have the exact same class there, but just in a smaller size. So next I want to show you a couple of things that may or may not come with your bag. First of all, the dust bag. So both of my Lady Dior's actually came with a Swan dust bag. If you look there, you can see that it's beautifully made. I don't think that everybody gets a Lady Dior with the Swan dust bag. You can just get the simple dust bag, which I'll show you in a second. If you do get the Swan one, you can see at the side here, it just has quite simple little pulls. And on the inside of this bag, there is actually a label and the label reads made in Italy, 100% cotton. Now the other dust bag that you can sometimes get, which I've seen other people have, and I actually got on a different bag, is just the simple Lady Dior dust bag. This one doesn't have an internal label and it actually has strings at either side that pull it together. So 
very similar quality just without the swan. Inside the box as well with the bag I got one of these books with both of my Lady Dior's. I know not everybody again gets these but these show how the Lady Dior is actually constructed and there is actually a really great video that I'll post a link to down below that is really good to look at if you can't work out whether or not something is real or fake on the bag because you've seen a little bit about how it's constructed so it doesn't help for everything and it's also just interesting if you're a bit of a geek so I really like that. Now inside your bag itself you should have an authentication card which usually comes in a cute little envelope like this. If I just open it up I do actually have my authentication card here and I also have another book which I'll just show you which just has, I think this is how to look after your piece. Yes it talks about waterproofing and things like that so it says DR on the front and it just has the CD on the back. If you look at the authentication card it's not quite the same material as a credit card, it's a little bit more cardboardy than that but it's not cardboard, it is quite well made. If I turn it round, just covering my details over, so if you look here you can see that you've got information at the top and then a big box saying where it was made and then on the other side you actually have three little boxes. On many fake authentication cards they actually just have two big boxes so this is what it should look like, that top one's got a barcode and then these bottom two are filled in. Mine has the date that it was born and a reference number the date that it was born. I think I need a baby now, I've officially gone too crazy for this. So it has the date that I bought it, a reference number and a barcode and my dignity I think, so I'm just going to move that all to one side. Packaging wise, any bag that you see on eBay that has plastic wrapped around these handles, that is unlikely to be authentic because that is not how they come. They come usually with tissue paper or ribbon wrapped around the handles or a combination of both. One of my bags arrived with no tissue paper around it whatsoever and one of them came with tissue paper wrapped around and it's the white Dior tissue paper with a little Dior motif on it every so often and then it also has a little bit of ribbon around the top with Dior written on it just holding the handles together. There was no plastic covering this bag. The only place that you get plastic is over the charm or over the little bits of metalwork here which is clear plastic. In fact it's so clear that I decided to leave it on some of my little ovals here because it is quite subtle but you can peel it off if you are sensible. I personally like to leave mine on because I accidentally left it on my larger bag for about three four months and never noticed so I figured I'll do the same with this and then take it off so hopefully it'll just protect it for longer. If you're lucky enough to get it in an original box which is very unusual because they're hard to come by this is what the Dior box looks like. It's bright white, it's quite soft, I can see why they don't survive very long for some people but as you can see it's just got the little kind of oval pattern on the front, ovals are on everything Dior, you've got your little CD stickers sometimes stuck all around them, it's got a recycling thing on the back in the top corner. That is pretty much all there is to do with this box. I don't see many coming with the original box but you see many with the original authenticity card and a lot of the other features I've just shown you now. So any plastic wrapped around the bag is a big no-no, however you may get one of these on the bag which I actually really quite like or you may get one around your long chain if you get a mini bag with the chain that you've just seen and these little bags they've got a little bit of elastic in the top here and a string on them and what people tend to do is wrap them around your charm here and pop a little bow on so it just protects your bag from the charm while it's in the box. This is pretty much the quality of the wrapping that you get so if you're getting clear or blue plastic over the leather be warned don't buy it. Honestly out of all of the designer handbags I find the Lady Dior one of the best knocked off bags on the market at the moment. Now when it comes to buying fakes the prices on the genuine Lady Dior is very very high now, it has gone up a bit over time, it's now in the two to three thousand pound price bracket for some of the basic bags and more than that for some of the uh, bigger or more flashy ones which is absolutely astronomical. So obviously the fake bags which are being sold as real bags, they're not usually sold as fake, uh, are getting almost that price so you need to be really careful. I will have a few more hints and tips about buying these bags second hand in the next couple of days. I'm going to upload a second video. I'm going to try and get it out at the same time as this one but editing wise I know that doesn't usually happen. Personally I would always say buy the bag from a store if you absolutely can because it gets rid of that little element of doubt from your mind and also Dior have the best customer service I think out of all the luxury boutiques at the moment. I just think Dior seems to hire really nice people to work for them and actually buying the bag is a luxury experience so I would definitely recommend buying it from Dior if you possibly can. So that is it for today's video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any comments please don't hesitate to leave them down below. If there's anything that you think I've missed or anything you disagree with again please comment about it but more importantly if you've bought a bag secondhand and if you've had a really good or a really bad or any experience 
please do pop it in the comments because I do think it helps other people. So I hope this video has been helpful today. I just really like making them because I think it really makes me appreciate the finer details of the genuine pieces as well as helping people to spot fake bags as well. I do appreciate that not everyone can afford the genuine bags or wants to spend that amount of money and I think some people get a real buzz from trying to buy them pre-loved and get a genuine piece. So good luck to all of you who are thinking of doing that. I think the Lady Dior is a beautiful bag. The Mini is entirely impractical and doesn't carry anything at all but it's so 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 pretty <laughs> that I would highly recommend it. The medium is a little bit more functional if you don't mind scratching your hand over a zip all day but they're both really nice bags <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one which will be my tips for buying pre-loved bags. Bye!